Welcome to the News Hour. Former President Donald Trump is in Miami tonight ahead of an initial court appearance tomorrow on a raft of federal criminal charges. All of them relate to his handling of classified documents after he left office. Mr. Trump and his supporters have lambasted the indictment and the Biden Justice Department. That has officials in Miami bracing for potential trouble at the federal courthouse. Lisa Desjardins reports. In Miami today, security tape is going up and words of precaution are going out ahead of tomorrow's court appearance by former President Donald Trump. Mayor Francis Suarez and team said they're ready for up to 50,000 protesters. We hope that tomorrow will be peaceful. We encourage people to be peaceful in, in them demonstrating uh, how, they're, how they feel. And uh, we're going to have the adequate forces uh, necessary to ensure that. A thousand miles away, Mr. Trump began his journey to court, boarding a plane in New Jersey en route to Florida. There, he'll face 37 counts on charges he held onto hundreds of classified documents, including top military secrets after leaving the White House, and that he resisted requests and a subpoena to hand them over. Friday's detailed indictment included photos of boxes sprawled throughout his Mar-a-Lago home including in a bathroom on a ballroom stage and spilled over a storage room floor. This is the final battle. This after a weekend of not just denying and blasting the charges, but in an interview, Trump called for supporters to go to Miami and peacefully protest. In rallies in North Carolina and Georgia, he urged resolve. We don't fold. We don't fold our tent and go home. And again, we want to drain the swamp. And I'm the only one that's going to do it. Nobody else is going to do it. We know the competition. We know it. Anyone else will be absolutely ripped to shreds. These are sick, sick, sinister people. This is the most political thing I have ever seen. They've his supporters and some of his Republican presidential rivals have kept up a drumbeat in Mr. Trump's defense. With some, like key rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, choosing not to proclaim Trump innocent so much as to denounce the Justice Department as corrupt. Our founding fathers would have absolutely predicted the weaponization that we've seen with these agencies, particularly justice and FBI. Because when you don't have constitutional accountability, human nature is such that they will abuse their power. But new today, Trump's U.N. ambassador Nikki Haley told Fox News that while she thinks the DOJ has lost all credibility, now, after looking at the details here... If this indictment is true, if what it says is actually the case, President Trump was incredibly reckless with our national security. Sunday, Mr. Trump's own attorney general also rang in on the charges. If even half of it is true, then he's toast. Former Justice Department head Bill Barr told Fox News Trump had no right to keep such sensitive records. I defend the president on, on Russiagate. Uh, I, I stood up and, and, and called out Alvin Bragg's politicized hit job. This is simply not true. This, this particular episode of trying to retrieve those documents, the government acted responsibly, and it was Donald J. Trump who acted irresponsibly. But that's not how most Republican voters see it. A CBS News poll released yesterday found that 76 percent of likely primary voters said they thought Mr. Trump's indictment was only politically motivated. At the White House, Press Secretary Corrine Jean-Pierre again declined to respond to the indictment. This is a president that respects the rule of law. This is the president that wants to make sure uh, and has proven that to be in his actions to make sure that the Department of Justice is truly independent. I'm just not going to, uh, to speak to uh, the case uh, at all or, or comment on the case. The attention tomorrow centers around the federal courthouse in Miami and the former president's court date when his attorneys have said he will plead not guilty. And Lisa joins us now with more about how Republicans are reacting to the indictment. Lisa, good to see you. Good to see you. So tell us, what have we been seeing in the day since the indictment? In the first day, since we learned of the news of the indictment, but before we actually saw the details, there was a torrent of Republican response, especially from his supporters in Congress. I want to go through some of the themes that we've heard from Republicans about this indictment. First of all, you have many who are pushing back at the Department of Justice, like Representative Mike Collins of Georgia, for example, tweeted out this. He wanted to abolish, he said, the corrupt 
corrupt FBI and Justice Department. That was sort of on one end of the criticism of DOJ, but Representative Lisa McLean of Michigan, she's a member of House leadership, wrote the DOJ has become nothing more than a political weapon. There are others who we've seen Republicans say this is uh, hypocritical for the Biden administration and even say it's a double standard. Mm -hmm. For example, Senator Bill Haggerty of Tennessee, he wrote there's a two-tiered justice system on full display. The Biden DOJ buries investigations. Here he goes into the Biden family. Now, this is something that's going on separately in the House where um, some House lawmakers were able to see an FBI report that accuses the Biden family of some bribery. It is unsubstantiated. There was not an investigation. But the Republicans are raising that as an example of a double standard. We know that the FBI is also investigating Biden in terms of documents, but that, that's ongoing right now. So this is what we have been saying publicly in terms of people yeah. speaking out. You've also been tracking who we haven't heard anything from. What stands out to you about that? This is really notable. Many Republican sources that I've talked to are not saying on the record what they're telling me privately, mm -hmm. that they were looking at the indictment and we saw clearly a change. After the indictment come out, came out, far fewer Republicans have been responding at all. Now, let's talk about who in particular has not said anything publicly. How about the top Republican in the Senate, Senator Mitch McConnell? He had an opportunity to speak on the floor today, did not talk about the indictment at all. We know he's been an opponent of President Trump in some ways in the past, but some other really significant ones with no public statement yet. Look at this. At the top row, Richard Hudson, he is a member of House leadership, no statement yet. Mike Turner, he is the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. So these are some important Republicans you see with no statement yet. Lisa, when you talk to folks, whether they're telling you privately or publicly, is there a sense of how Republicans see this? Is it something that will help them or, or hurt them? This remains a divided party. I just talked to a strategist who said they were hoping that this could be the thing that pushes President Trump out of their party. They're not sure that this is enough to really derail his supporters. On the other hand, they think that once we get into a general election, this is something that could hurt him in the fall. Right now, it does seem this is helping former President Trump with fundraising, at least, and with sort of energizing some of his supporters. Lisa Desjardins covering all of this for us. And of course, we'll see what happens after the arraignment tomorrow as right. well. Good to see you, Lisa. Thank you. You too.